name's Greg Hopkins, G4 CST, and I developed the uh, Morse Magic CW filter, CW reader, and CW keyer. It was originally designed as a simple CW filter to detect and replicate the input through a loudspeaker to remove all of the noise. It then evolved into a CW reader, uh, which operates anywhere between uh, well zero and um, well maybe one and uh, 50 words per minute. Uh, and then I decided to add the uh, Kia capability um, so that it becomes a full-blown um, Morse tutor, Morse reader, Morse sender, uh, everything you could possibly need to interface between yourself uh, and the rig. The latest uh, software development is that of a, uh, a terminal monitor so that you can not only uh, read the Morse on the LCD display but also uh, have it on a terminal to make it much easier to read uh, and also you can type in characters on the terminal uh, which can be then sent to the transmitter uh, through the CW which is created uh, by the Morse magic. So let's have a look see what we've got here. Um, so this is the device it's uh, it's a board just over 100 mil square and um, it has a, uh, a mini USB power supply uh, socket uh, which is connected to a Arduino Nano processor which does all the work on this. It's got a serial output which also now is a serial input um, so that you can transmit and receive ordinary characters and it's translated from and to uh, Morse code. Uh, there's a key input which takes a straight key or a paddle key. An audio input from which you connect to your, uh, your radio receiver. Uh, which is fully isolated from the receiver by the isolating transformer and likewise the output to the uh, line out on the other side of the board is also fully isolated and the output to the Kia which is a simple relay contact uh, is also completely isolated from this board. At the bottom we have the uh, gain control so that you can uh, reduce the input on noisy bands to get rid of some unwanted noise and a pitch and speed control for controlling the output uh, pitch to the speaker and the speed of the generated Morse. In the middle at the top you have a LCD display uh, which displays the uh, received Morse or the transmitted Morse. Uh, it reads everything that it receives and it also reads everything that it transmits so you get a full record of what's gone on. To the right hand side of that is an LED bar graph which indicates the uh, strength of the incoming signal and uh, that is normally optimized to, uh, to give you the best possible signal. Um, generally in terms of tuning um, it is a very narrow band filter, it's only about uh, 50 to 80 hertz wide and uh, so tuning on the main tuning dial of your receiver can sometimes be difficult so it's often useful to use the uh, clarifier or the RIT control to bring you closer to the, uh, the place you want to be um, and uh, that, that indicator uh, will maximize at the tone which is the best for the, um, for the receiver. Okay so let's have a look at one in real life what we're going to look at here um, is a display from um, a PC which is connected to the Morse reader. This is a Morse reader which is live, it's just been switched on. This has the latest version of software which is version 3.5. Um, very little difference between 3.2 and 3.5. If you happen to have an older version, uh, don't worry, the performance of the reader hasn't changed in that time. There's just a few, a few minor changes. So this is all connected and ready to go. I recorded yesterday some uh, some CW from 40 meters. So I'm just going to play that through the reader now. The sound you'll hear is the sound from the speaker because, as I said, this was originally designed as a CW filter. Um, so we're not going to hear all the bangs and crashes from the band. What we'll hear is just the Morse as it comes out through, translated uh, through the CW filter. And that filtered CW is what's used to uh, to source the reader. So here we go. Okay, now remember this is actually CW that came from the uh, the off-air recording. I'll just plug it into listen to the recording raw. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's what it sounded like when it came out of the radio. And this is what it sounds like when it comes out of the uh, out of the reader. Okay, now that um, just need to explain what happened in the middle there. The um, the Morse uh, was ceased for a few seconds, and during that time, the threshold of the reader was uh, was reduced because it was trying to find what happened to the signal. Uh, it's got a very um, high dynamic range uh, input on the hardware amplifier uh, with a lot of AGC uh, and the same on the software. So as the signal comes in, it will actually raise the threshold to make it more noise immune as it's receiving. But of course, when the signal disappears, uh, it drops down to, uh, to nothing because it's trying to find the signal that's just gone. Uh, and of course, that signal disappeared altogether. So the, um, this was quite a noisy band yesterday when I recorded it. And so those little E's and T's is it finding little little splashes of noise, uh, which potentially could be uh, Morse characters. Uh, because within the noise, there is always a 500 hertz element. When it finds those, it just detects them and says, well, it must be an E or a T. Uh, and of course, it doesn't know until the Morse actually starts again that um, what is the proper Morse and what, what is the proper threshold. Um, it's one of the penalties of having it tracking the QSB down to, uh, down to zero. Um, but uh, it, it means that occasionally uh, you might lose the first couple of characters once the CW comes back in again. But in the scheme of things, that's uh, that's really not much of an issue. OK, so what else does it do? We can see the screen there. Um, I have a more scheme in front of me. Uh, let's just see. Uh, OK, so that, OK, that's me. Um, just uh, just sending those characters. I just want to uh, to send a few a few dots. Okay, and that's just me adjusting the tone. So you can have the output tone to please yourself. The input detected frequency is always 50 hertz. The output can be whatever you prefer it to be. The output goes through the line output socket to an active speaker. That is a speaker with an amplifier built in. Uh, I have a little Bluetooth speaker which I use for everything, uh, which has a 3.5mm uh, jack socket on the back, which plugs in nicely to this and, uh, and is very, very useful portable speaker. Uh, so the other control uh, on here, uh, you've got the gain on the left-hand side, which I said you can be, can reduce to, uh, to to get rid of some of that uh, that troublesome noise that you can get in between uh, between the CW sending on uh, on particularly noisy bands. On the right-hand side here, uh, we have the speed control. So I'll send some dots again and adjust the speed up and down. Okay, and that goes from uh, 6 to 50 words per minute sending. Uh, I can also send using the keyboard, so if I just type in some characters on my keyboard here. I've got to... Uh, there we are. So that's me sending, let me just say hello. Uh, and today's date, which I think is the... 26th, I believe, of May. Okay, so that's generating CW from the keyboard. So that will generate the speed that it's uh, set at uh, on the uh, on the speed control on the uh, on the device here. Um, it is an, an iambic key. Um, if we turn the speed right the way down to zero, uh, like that, and I then I hold the key. Okay, it's now translated from mode A to mode B. So it now does iambic mode B instead of mode A. It always powers up and defaults to mode A because that seems to be the most popular. Uh, but you can set it to mode B. So when you turn the speed back up again. Okay, you can hear the extra dip because I'm not used to iambic mode B. Let's put the extra dip in at the end. So let's just turn it back. I'll turn that back down to zero again. Okay, that's now retest set itself to mode A. And uh, so the next time I key, it will come up with. It does take a few seconds to sort itself out after a mode change. There we go. Okay. So that's the iambic mode. So you can, if I turn it down, I can just use my key and actually send uh, Morse from the uh, from the key as if it was a straight key.
That's better. Okay, so obviously it's uh, it's looking for um, characters using the standard uh, width, which is a, a dot and a dash. The dash being three times longer than the dot, and the character space being uh, being just one, and the in the inter character space being three, and the interword space being seven. Um, that's all compared to a single dot or a single dit. Um, so it will read machine morse quite happily. Um, it will it will cope with manual morse to a fair degree of uh, redundancy um, and works moderately well. Uh, it has full braking capabilities. So whilst we're listening to morse, I'll just turn that back on again. Okay, I can actually now break into that. Oops. That's me. And this is the morse coming back in from the external feed. This is me again. And there's the, uh, there's the CW from the reader back in again. Okay, there's a 500 millisecond gap, so half a second uh, after the last keystroke before it starts to receive again, which uh, is a, uh, a perfectly reasonable time. Um, to operate. So that's the uh, that's the most magic uh, in all its glory. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, if you have any questions at all um, then you can contact me. Uh, my email address is uh, greg, that's g-r-e-g, -E uh, greg 4cst, greg 4cst, g-r-e-g, -E number 4, charlie sierra tango at um, gmail.com. Any questions please let me know. And, uh, and thank you for watching.